Hi all, I am Surabhi Gurian, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, Mar Agassino's College, Ramaburam. In this session, I will be explaining the topic deadlocks, which is one of the important topic in operating system. What do you mean by deadlocks? In a multi-programming environment, several processes may compete for a finite number of resources. A process requests resources. If the resources are not available at that time, process enters into a waiting state. Sometimes the waiting process is never able to change its state because the requested resources are held by other waiting processes. This situation is called a deadlock. For example, here we have two processes P1 and P2 and two resources R1 and R2. P1 is holding the resource R1 and it is waiting for resource R2 which is held by process P2. At the same time, process P2 is holding the resource R2 and it is waiting for resource R1 which is held by process P1. Here, neither process P1 nor process P2 cannot complete its execution. P1 and P2 are in a deadlock state because each of them needs others resources but neither of them is willing to relinquish their resources. This situation is called a deadlock. We know that a system consists of finite number of resources. Resources in the sense CPU, memory and IO devices. Resources may have some number of identical instances. For example, if a system has two CPUs, we can say that our system has two instances of CPUs. Similarly, if a system has three printers, we can say that our system has three instances of printers. Processes utilizes resources only in a particular sequence. The sequence is request, use and release. A process must first request the resource. If the resources are not available, then it enters into a waiting state. If the resources are available, then it can use that resource. After completing its task, a process must release its resources. Under normal mode of operations, processes utilizes resources in this manner. First a process requests a resource. Uh, if the resources are available, then it can use that resource. After completing its task, a process must release its resources. Next we can see deadlock characterization with the help of necessary conditions and a resource allocation graph. First, we can discuss about the necessary conditions of a deadlock. The necessary conditions of a deadlock are mutual exclusion, hold and wait, no preemption and circular wait. When all these four conditions occur simultaneously in a system, a deadlock can happen. Let's see each condition one by one. First one is mutual exclusion. Mutual exclusion means at least one resource must be held in a non-shareable mode. That is only one process at a time can use the resource. If another process requests that resource, the requesting process must wait. For example, if process P1 is using the resource R1 at a particular instant of time, then process P2 cannot use that resource at that time. Here, resources can only be shared in a mutually exclusive manner. Next one is hold and wait. Hold and wait means process must hold at least one resource and waiting to acquire additional resources that are held by other waiting processes. For example, process P1 can hold resources R1 and R2. At the same time, it can request resource R3, 
which is held by process P2. Here, processes hold some resources and waiting to acquire additional resources that are held by other waiting processes. Next one is no preemption. No preemption means resources cannot be preempted. Once a resource has been allocated to a process, the process release its resource only after completing its task. For example, if process P1 is using the resource R1, then process P2 cannot forcefully take that resource from process P1. For using that resource, process P2 must wait until process P1 release that resource. Okay, last one is circular wait condition. A set P0, P1, P2, etc. Pn of waiting processes must exist such that P0 is waiting for a resource held by process P1. And process P1 is waiting for a resource held by process P2. Process Pn minus 1 is waiting for a resource held by process Pn. And process Pn is waiting for a resource held by process P0. Here, a set of processes waiting for each other in a circular form. That is circular wait condition. When all these conditions occur simultaneously in a system, a deadlock can happen. Next, we can see resource allocation graph. Deadlock can be described with the help of resource allocation graph. Actually, resource allocation graph is a tool for recognizing deadlocks, which is very similar to normal graphs. This graph consists of set of vertices V and set of edges E. Vertices V is nothing but processes and resource types. Here, vertices V is partitioned into two different types of nodes, P equal to P1, P2, etc., Pn, the set consisting of all processes in the system, and R equal to R1, R2, etc., Rm, the set consisting of all resource types in the system. In our example, P1, P2 and P3 are the set of processes in the system and R1, R2, R3 and R4 are the set of resource types in the system. Here we have two edges, request edge and assignment edge. An edge from PI to RJ is denoted like this which means that PI has requested an instance of resource type RJ and it is currently waiting for that resource. This edge is called request edge. Consider this example here P1 to R1 is a request edge which means that P1 has requested an instance of resource type R1 and it is currently waiting for that resource. An edge from RJ to PI is denoted like this, which means that an instance of resource type RJ is currently allocated to process PI. This edge is called an assignment edge. Again consider this example, here R3 to P3 is an assignment edge, which means that an instance of resource type R3 is currently allocated to process P3. In our example, P1 to R1 and P2 to R3 are request edges and R1 to P2, R2 to P1, R2 to P2 and R3 to P3 are assignment edges. Here circle represents the processes and rectangle represents the resource types. The dots within the rectangle represents number of instances of resource type available. Different resource instances are one instance of resource type R1, two instances of resource type R2, one instance of resource type R3 and three instances of resource type R4. 
different process states are here P1 is holding an instance of resource type R2 and it is waiting for an instance of resource type R1. P2 is holding an instance of resource type R1 and instance of resource type R2 and it is currently waiting for an instance of resource type R3. Here P3 is holding an instance of resource type R3. The definition of resource allocation graph is that if the graph does not contain a cycle then the system is not in a deadlocked state. If the graph does contain a cycle, then there is a possibility of deadlock. If the resource type has only single instance, then cycle implies that a deadlock has occurred. In that case, cycle is necessary and sufficient condition for the occurrence of deadlock. If the resource type has multiple instances, then cycle implies, then cycle does not imply that a deadlock has occurred. In that case, Cycle is necessary but not a sufficient condition for the occurrence of deadlock. Consider this example. Here we have three processes and four resource types. Here we have two cycles. The first cycle is P1, R1, P2, R3, P3, R2, P1. The second cycle is P2, R3, P3, R2, P2. Our question is whether the system is in a deadlocked state. In this example, process P2 is waiting for an instance of resource type R3 which is held by process P3. Process P3 is waiting for either process P1 or process P2 to release the resource R2. In addition, process P1 is waiting for process P2 to release the resource R1. Here, processes P1, P2 and P3 are deadlocked. Each of them needs others resources, but neither of them is willing to relinquish their resources. So, the system is not in a safe state. Consider another example. Here we have four processes and two resource types. Here also have a cycle. The cycle is P1, R1, P3, R2, P1. Our question is whether the system is in a deadlocked state. Here process P2 needs only one resource that is R1. R1 is already allocated to process P2. When process P2 completes its execution, this resource can be allocated to process P1. Similarly, here process P4 only needs one resource that is R2. R2 is only already allocated to process P4. When process P4 completes its execution, that resource can be allocated to process P3. Here the system is in a safe state. There is no chance for the occurrence of deadlock. We can summarize that if the resource allocation graph does not contain a cycle, then the system is not in a deadlock state. If the resource allocation graph does contain a cycle, then there is a possibility of deadlock. That is system may or may not be in a deadlock state. Now we have reached the end of the session that is all about deadlocks. Thank you.